Hi everyone, uh, this is Adam Dewhurst and I am just going to record a little guide on how I'm using um, 123D Creature um, to do some sculpting on the iPad and then transfer it to ZBrush or Mudbox or Maya um, to finish up the character. Um, so what I've got here is um, I'm recording my iPad screen with the Reflector app um, and I'm going to build a creature using 123D Creature um, today I'm building it from uh, the Spit, Spit Sculpt group on Facebook. Just to show you that quickly, so this is uh, Spit Sculpts. They have a daily 45-minute theme. Um, it's quite good for inspiration. So uh, I think we've got those Lord of the Rings there. Uh, today's theme um, was uh, Ice Giant, so or Frost Giant, I think. Um, so that's what I'm going to try and attempt today. Um, so we'll leave this. Um, I've got a bunch of the 1, 2, 3D uh, apps installed, but um, 1, 2, 3D Sculpt, uh, you can see at the top here, is sort of the predecessor to 1, 2, 3D Creature, uh, both made by Autodesk. Um, 1, 2, 3D Creature I prefer. Uh, it's got a very good um, base mesh installer, uh, or base mesh builder, I should say. Um, you can build uh, in a kind of a similar way to Z-Spheres. Um, so let's launch 1, 2, 3D Creature. Um, so this it shows all the things I've, I've built in the past. I've only been using it for a week or two. Um, it, it sort of gets better every time. Uh, I keep learning new things about it, but it is very good just to uh, quickly knock up some uh, great sort of base shapes. I'll show you a couple of guys I've already done. Um, so these are some characters that uh, I wouldn't say I worked on for too long. They're all sort of about half an hour. Um, uh, but very easy to create creatures and um meshes very quickly and then take some of these into um uh, a sculpting package to possibly add detail and or maybe retopologize. So for this I am going to start a new one. So I'm gonna go create new. And what you get is uh sort of a, a skeletal rig. Now at the bottom here we've got create, move, uh you've got shape, pose and scale. We're basically gonna use all of them pretty much. Um create does exactly what you think it would do. You can create a uh, a limb, so I've just drawn a new one there. Um, but what it also does, and what this isn't really advertised, is that if you click on a joint, you can delete it as well. So uh, when I first had this, I didn't realize that was a, an available option. So I all my first figures had started with this shape. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do here for this character is actually delete the legs, because I want to give this guy more of a spine. Um, so we'll go straight onto the move brush. Uh, move brush does exactly what you'd expect. Uh, it uh, moves the joints around. Um, uh, just a side note, I'm using a uh, Maglus uh, stylus for this. I haven't used a lot of styluses for um, the iPad, but this one is uh, it's got a good weight to it. Um, I'm going to try a few others out, um, but uh, this is the one I'm using today and it's doing a pretty good job. Um, so right, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the what would be the arms up to be shoulder joints. Um, and I've got to think about what I'm going to build here. So uh, remember we're going with Frost Giant. I think I am a fan of big armed creatures. So I'm going to build some long gangly arms. So I'm going to use them using the crate brush now. Now symmetry is automatically turned on in here. So if I go to a more frontal view, I'm rotating by the way by just selecting on the air, the black area outside the model. Um, if I pull outwards, you'll see it creates joint to the side. So um, I think I'm going to add another piece of spine first. Oh. And uh, let's move this. Might be one too many actually, but yeah, that'll be fine. Okay. So I'm going to create the hips at this point. Actually, as you can see, I've done one too many now on the. I'm using this a fair bit on the left and the right at the bottom of the screen you've got an arrow facing to the left and one facing to the right. These are your undo and redo buttons. Really very useful. Um, so let's create... There we go. Right, there's the hips. So I'm not too worried about um, the actual final shape at this point. I, I am just sort of plotting in the limbs and I'm going to lead. Uh, so I'm making some legs very quickly. And I'm going to make this guy have big sort of tree trunk type legs. I'm not going to do feet. I'm going to do hands. Uh, so let's. I'm going to switch up to the scale brush now. 
and I'm going to select this node here and if I drag upwards you can see it scales up. I'm going to scale those legs up a bit and I think I'll try the same maybe at the hips. I'm not so bothered about having big legs but I would like big arms. And I'm going to create a hand and then from there I have to, I've got to say I think this app is great for doing hands. Remember this can all be scaled down so I'm just going to pull out some finger joints and a thumb. And then I'm going to take go to the move brush and start trying to arrange these a little better. Okay, maybe pull them forward a bit. Right now, at the moment, these are all too chunky. So the solution is to go to the shape brush, which is in the middle. And what you can do is you can slide the, I think they call them bones, Autodesk call these bones. So you can slide these to make them thicker or thinner. So I'm going to make them all quite a bit thinner. And the goal here for me is what I want to do is make a really as much as possible in this app and then upload it as an OBJ. down. Oop, that one's gone the wrong way, I'll just go and do. Okay, can use the move brush again. And once you get joints near each other they do sort of merge up, which is um it's handy but it's all, sometimes it can be frustrating. I am trying to keep this quite simple. Alright, let's pull in some more joints. Because I've scaled these down the new joints should be of the same scale as I've just set them to. Okay. Okay, so that's my basic starting point for that. Remember, these are going to be sculpted afterwards. Make some slight tweaks here. And of course, if I want to pose it a bit, uh, that's this is the best point to do that in. You're going to have much more control over posing your figure while it's still in the um, skeletal mode. These aren't all quite the same, so I'm going to scale this last one down just a little bit more. I'm trying to keep it quite simple. Move my thumb around. Right, now the angle of the hand is, is I don't want it facing that way, so I'm now going to go to the pose tool. And this works vaguely similar to how the transform um, brush works in ZBrush, in that it'll move it in the sort of, it seems to move it in the viewport you're in. So I'm just going to want to try and twist this around a bit. facing forward like they were a minute ago. Right, now let's play with the shape mode again on the arms. So I think I'm going to want to bulk up the ends. I'd like to make this guy sort of quite organic. Um, I think we'll also use pose here. I'm going to use pose on the legs just to separate them out a bit. And again, we'll start playing with shape. So I'm going to thicken up his spine a bit. I'm quite keen on having um, big upper torsos, so let's let's pull that out a bit. And again, I said I was going to do big sort of tree trunk like legs. So let's maybe rotate that around a little. I can still, yeah, there we go. That's kind of what I was aiming for. Okay. So each um, bone you put in, I guess, has two points you can scale it at. Uh, so if you are doing something, remember that you're going to have to do, if you are scaling up this, you are going to have to do both. Um, and remember, we've got a smooth brush that comes with the sculpt tools. 
so you can fix that later if, if it's not I mean I don't have to be super neat here I'm just getting the rough shape Right now, I'm going to want to do some kind of head. A couple of things also with the fingers. I can see there's, I quite, I, I want them ideally to look as, as similar as possible. I don't want them all to look funny. So that one's a little bit off. Let's try and do something interesting for the head. Uh, so I've got a sort of neck point here. Uh, let's try and just try playing with the scale, perhaps. Do I want to scale it up? I think I do actually a bit. And then let's shape it. And I think I might add a jaw. So I'm going to use the quote brush again. Check my recording still going. Yep. And let's move this one over. Oop. The other thing is at the top here, you've got a little eye icon. If you click that, you can turn the skeleton off if it's getting distracting. Um, obviously, you need it to work, but it doesn't mean you have to have it on all the time. You can turn it off. So I'm just moving some of these around to seeing seeing what shape I get. I'm looking for a kind of overhang on the front here. So what I might do is scale up this bit above his head. Okay, let's see if I'm going to, I'll just have a little play again, see if I'm going to create something that might represent eyes, might not, I don't know, I'm just having, at this point, I'm just trying to create the shape, a uh, shape that's interesting. You can, of course, you don't have to have the bone structure reflect um, something that's actually going to be rigged. This is really just to make the, the starting shape. Just playing with it a bit. Right, let's just have a little more. I'd like, I do like really big arms. Let's pose these a bit forward if I can. By the way, there are things on here that I'm, I'm you know, I've just been working this out as I go. Um, so things <laughs> I might say aren't necessarily what Autodesk agrees. It's just as I found to use it. That's all. And let's again have a little play with the scale. That's quite nice. Okay. I'm happy with that as my base shape, I think. <laughs> Oftentimes it's quite nice not to start with the theme as well, just to go for it, but sometimes you do, brain goes a bit dry. Okay, so I'm gonna be happy with that now. I'm gonna click on the project button in the top corner and I'm gonna go to save over with existing. So that'll save it in case for whatever reason the app might crash. And now I'm gonna go <coughs> click on the icon again to go back to it and in the corner bottom uh, right hand corner I'm going to click bake selection so it's going to bake it it does come up with weird stuff here I don't think it does spray biogel okay so it's just going to bake it into one mesh and now I'm told Autodesk has um, a set poly limit on this so it really doesn't matter how many joints you create you're still going to ultimately have the same finished amount so you don't you know I wouldn't necessarily if you want them more dense, obviously have less joints because then it's going to be 
in one space. You could delete all the joints just to get one one bone in the middle, one straight bone, and then sculpt from that. But I find it quite useful for making figures. So this does paint and render as well. I'm going to hit sculpt, and um, now I've got my sculpt tools. Um, these are also very simple. In the bottom, next to the sliding bars, which do brush sides, brush size, and brush strength, you've got a little icon that I'm going to toggle on and off here that does um, um, symmetry. Now I'm going to sculpt this symmetrically. Um, so I'm just going to turn on flatten. First thing I want to do is turn up the brush size and flatten off the feet. Okay, so I flatten off the feet um, and then I'm going to use uh, sculpt out. I'm going to change I'll leave the brush size where it is for now, just to have a quick play with this. Um, okay, so I might reduce my brush size a bit. I actually should have spent a little longer. Turn the brush size down. A little longer on these hands, I think. I say I'm not the world's um, best sculptor, but um, you guys will get the idea pretty quick. So this is basically your scaled down sculpting package. If you're thinking of ZBrush or Mudbox, similar to both. What I'm going to look for here is a sort of icy, frosty kind of guy. I've been doing quite organic characters, so I don't know if this is going to work. Let's uh, sculpt him. All right, I want to turn the, I'm going to undo those moves, and I'm going to take the grab brush. I want to shape the head a bit more. Yeah, I'm going to turn uh, symmetry off for a second. Turn my grab size up a little. I want to create the impression that the head is one big sort of, um, I don't know, diamondy rock formation. So as you can see that the um, the sculpting brushes have been um, basically um, scaled down to quite a simple selection. You've got your sculpt in and out. You've got a smooth brush. I mean, you can get away with just using those, but they've also provided a sharpened brush and a flatten. I'm not sure flatten is is necessarily the most we've used it here, but it's not one I use a lot. Um, I think I would have preferred an inflate brush myself, but maybe that'll happen in a future release. Who knows? Right, so I'm going to turn uh, symmetry back on. So you can zoom in as you would do on any iPad by, by pinching, uh, basically. And you rotate, as I say, by seeing the blank area. And you can sort of see it, it faceting a bit here where we've got the um, um, the poly limit at its, at its limit. So I'm just quickly trying to create rough shapes. And I'm going to use the sharpened brush here. This is, uh, oh, now it's set to too big of a brush. So that blue dot is quite a good guide. So I'm just probably going to this down. Got a bit of a, a fish fish mouth going on. That's fine. That's kind of what I was after. I don't know if anyone remembers the Gorgons from, is it Gorgons from Zelda? That's, I think, slightly what I'm going for here kind of ice giant creature put him in a bit of a sad look here and if you so basically the secret is if you do want to 
um, sh you know, highlight anything, it's to use the sharpen brush. Uh, I would recommend setting it to quite a small setting because then you can sort of refine and get see if you can get some you know quite thin lines going. And now I've got the grab brush set very small, so I can just make some minor adjustments. Okay, so back down to sculpt out. And I'm going to insinuate some, some ribs, hopefully. Now there is a, a time limit to these um, split sculpts. I hope they're going to let me post this because I'm taking a little, perhaps a little longer than I would normally. It's 45 minutes, but um, I uh, would like a quick second pass <laughs> in uh, ZBrush or something. I think if it's, so I might, I might post a little longer. I I will post it though. I'll tell everyone what I spent time wise. Okay, grab brush. I'm just going to get some basic. Forms in here, that's possibly a little small now. Well, I quite like his head to be as, as much as possible part of his um, build, to be part of the back and the same sort of thing. I really want it to look like this is growing out of the one shape. And I think I'm going to try and stretch his fingers a little too. I think when we get to the detailed stuff I might make these a little asymmetrical as if they're also sort of crystalline forms. And thinking ahead to rendering um, if you know that Keyshot has a really nice glass type shader so maybe I'll have a little play with that. I should a little bit of background. This you, like dabbling with this came about from. I don't have a hell of a lot of time at home to um, to do my own personal work, and um, sort of irritated me that I couldn't uh, really sculpt on the go. I mean, a laptop is a lot to carry around, and um, uh, having discovered this without there, this app, I did go out and get a new. Uh, having I tried it, I tried it in the Apple Store, and then um, I did go and get a new iPad uh, in order to do it. And I got to say, it has been brilliant. I have done so many more of my own creatures and on the commute to work, basically anywhere where I can fit it in. Okay, looks like I'm on the wrong brush. There we go. I'm just trying to have some shape here. I've got the sculpt in brush, but I want it to be less powerful than that, so I'm going to turn the strength down. Some very quick kneecaps, I think, if I can. Seems to be a, a basic one. Just 
give this a bit of uh, style, a bit of something. I don't know, I'm trying to widen it out a bit, basically. Really not too happy with the hands, I've got to say. Do a bit more work on those. So really at this point, you know, you're in your kind of refining stage of sculpting. I mean, you can obviously sculpt, I mean, I, I, I want to take this into another package to finish it, but uh, you can, of course, could do it all in here, but you're you're limited by your polygon count, which which won't go up. You can't, you can't subdivide it anymore. And um, it's a nuisance, but it's, it's also, in a way, it's also quite a nice limitation to have it does force you to be a bit more um, creative with your sculpting. Oh, apologies for that. Right. This is the first time I've tried recording off an iPad, so <laughs> I do apologize if there are some some um, glitches. Okay, let's, let's leave that down a little bit. All right, let's just do a little bit more work on the heads and then I think I'm going to try and export this back out to, well, to Maya initially. Actually, while we're going, I'm just gonna save, so I'm gonna go projects and save everywhere else existing. Okay, go back in. Give this guy a little bit more shape in his head. I do want to, uh, if you can see, I'm sort of insinuating a kind of a, I hope I'm insinuating anyway, like a skull shape underneath there. That's what I'm going for anyway. And that will be an eye, but I guess it's a little hard to see. Okay, so that is going to be my base mesh for my frost giant, which um, I can keep going to do more stuff. This guy, I kind of want to do it uh, a fair bit in uh, in the um, shader at the end, but I've got my, my rough base mesh as I wanted it, so I'm happy with that. Um, so I'm going to save them out. And now I've got a bunch of options I can use here. Um, Duplicate, which is great, you can make another model from the same skeletal structure. Uh, or I should say, duplicate replicates the whole mesh, but new creature from skeleton makes another um, another mesh from the skeleton. Uh, share with community, you can upload to the Autodesk 123D community. Um, I've got export to cloud. Um, again, I don't really need to do that. At the moment, I'm just going to go export mesh. Um, so I'm going to email that to myself. Uh, and you can order a 3D print, but I haven't tried that yet. So I'm just going to export this. I'm going to call it uh, Frost Giant. So it'll zip it up as a mesh. And this is all real time. I'm not speeding this up. Right, here we go. So now, of course, you can export it to whatever your email. It's so uh, I'm going to pause here, email it to myself, and we'll pick this back up on the PC uh, when I am bringing it into uh, Maya. All right. Hey everyone, so uh, onto the desktop now. Um, I've emailed myself the zip file from 123D Creature. Just going to unzip this. And what we get 
is you'll get your uh, PNG, which is your texture. Um, if we had painted texture, we would have got more on that. Uh, my OBJ, and you also get the MTL that comes with the OBJ. So we're going to open up Maya, and I'm bringing it to Maya first just so I can check the orientation and everything's okay and show you the sort of resolution. Um, so we're going to go File and Import, and I'm going to go to the Desktop, and bring in the Sculpt Shape. So it'll be quite small. There it is. We'll just zoom in that. This is what tends to happen. They come in and slightly the wrong axis. So in order for me to turn this into something I might I might end up using further, what I'm going to do is select the rotation uh, by hitting E and just rotate that 90. In fact, I'll just check my channel box to see if that is. So let's do minus 90. And we're in gray shaded mode. I'm going to go to the side view. Uh, so just zoom in. And what I'm going to do is bring him up to the ground level and I'm actually going to rotate him forward a bit so that his feet are a little more flat. I don't know if I want them completely flat because I'm not sure if I got that. Oh, that's not bad. Let's go with the perspective. That's pretty good. Okay, so there's my OBJ straight from my G3D creature. It, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, if you select it, you can see the polygons. And uh, you can see where we've really been pulling them on the face. But it's all a nice triangulated mesh. It's all symmetrical. Um, so happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is just uh, freeze the transforms. Uh, hit insert. Uh, I can hit insert and snap it to grid. Or I can just go uh, reset transforms. So I've got my pivot on the base. And I'm just going to go file. Uh, export selection. Uh, we'll select that as OBJ. I'm going to go to desktop and I'm going to call it Frost. Oh, oh, Frost Giant underscore 01. Off he goes. So that's him sorted. Uh, and now all I need to do is launch uh, ZBrush. Okay. So we'll let this launch, bring him in. And uh, then we can sculpt away uh, and add all the detail you want, possibly run ZV Mesher. Again, uh, I've yet to try this on Mudbox, but I intend to. Um, so all I'm going to do here is go to my cylinder shape. Let's just get rid of this menu. And in fact, uh, I'm just going to change my settings so the background is gray, double my document size, and I'm going to import the OBJ. So I'm going to go to the desktop, Frost Giant 01, bring him in. I'm going to drag, select so he's on our document. We'll hit edit and I'm just going to center him. And I'm going to hit the floor so I can see what the floor is. And that's pretty good. So all I'd want to do now really to work on him is uh, I think the first thing I want to do is I can dynamesh him, yeah, I'm going to want to because I've got to fix the facial area. Um, so if I start by upping the resolution a little, I'll leave project on, hit dynamesh, see how long this takes. So that's done it. Uh, let's zoom in and we'll hit uh, polyframe. Okay, so that's remeshed it for me. Um, basically, I'm going to sculpt away now. Um, I'm not going to record this real time, I'll do this as a time lapse and um, we'll see how how he goes basically. All right, see you in a bit. So um, I am back with uh, about 15 minutes later. Um, I was going to time lapse this, but sadly, um, uh, ZBrush crashed on me a couple of times. So we've lost the recording, but I've managed to salvage the model through auto save. Um, so uh, not done too much here. I've posted him ever so slightly. Um, I'm looking for an angle somewhat like this, I think. And I have used the H polish brush to give him a lot of hard edges, some asymmetry here and there. I pulled out a lot of um, icy growths, I guess you'd call them, um, using um, uh, using uh, the snake uh, hook tool. I think I might just very quickly try and pose his head. And then what I'm going to do is, uh, well, the sculpting element of this will be complete. And um, I'll try and do a render. Um, so I'm just going to quickly try and pose the head a little using the transform tool. Just wanted to look down a tad. That's, I think that's going to do. 
Okay, and I'll clear that. And I'm very quickly just going to polish up. Oh, don't do that. Polish up uh, some of these formations on its back. The age polish tool is great for rock formations, that sort of thing. Fantastic for sort of ice and sharp edges and all that kind of stuff. So great for this sort of character. I've also come in, I've given him eyelids and um, just maybe given him a few more features, some icicles, that sort of thing. As I say, I'm keeping this sculpt really, really basic where possible. So there we have it. Okay. And hopefully in a minute I'll be able to show you guys a nice uh, render of this guy. So all I'm going to do here is save as. Uh, we'll call it Frost Giant. And poly count is 8 milli, it's a bit high, so I think what I'm going to do is just duplicate the sub tool. Um, and I'm going to decimate it and then I'm going to export this. So I shall see you in a minute, uh, hopefully in Keyshot. Hey everyone, so um, I've taken the decimated ZBrush model and brought it into Keyshot. So we've imported it in here. Um, good idea to decimate it just to keep the sort of rendering times down. Um, and I've just quickly put the blue gemstone shader on this. What I'm going to do is, um, now I've got it in a position I like, um, I'm going to render out a bunch of stills. Uh, in fact, I've already done this, and you can see them all in Photoshop. So that's the finished image, but what we created to get to there was, uh, that was our glass shader. We did, did a, there's a ceramic turquoise shader. Um, I've got, this is the soft touch uh, white, I think, and I'm using that as a sort of an ambient. And lastly, I did a metallic, which had a nice, rather nice bump on it, just for some sort of surface detail. And you saw it a minute ago, but what I've done here is basically layer them all up, um, using different multiply layers and overlay layers. Um, really, that's all in, in the background. I've snapped in a very quick um, image off Google, um, and a quick bit of taking some, some shadow down the bottom and a quick floor. Um, that is about it, really. Um, so all in all, uh, excusing render times, I think about 45, 50 minutes sculpting. Um, the actual, no actual texturing, um, just some quick uh, lighting and rendering in key shot. Uh, and this image took maybe 20 minutes to throw together. Um, so that is how I use 123D Creature. Uh, it is a really, really good app, so I thoroughly recommend everyone giving it a go um, and post online what you do. Um, and uh, yeah, give it a go. Alrighty, thanks for watching.